Rai Prol uh, Poetry Award, um, and um, the session is going to be chaired or moderated by uh, Professor Raparna Rai Prol uh, from the University of Hyderabad. The award itself is given um, by uh, the uh, Srinivas Rai Prol uh, family of the uh, of the poet Srinivas Rai Prol, but it is given in collaboration with the Department of English at the University of Hyderabad. Um, and uh, the recipient this year is here, uh, as well as one member of the jury. And so I will invite uh, Professor Ayprol to come here and uh, take over the session. Thank you very much, Professor Usha Raman. It's indeed a pleasure to be back in person after two years of giving away the prize online. Um, we did both events online in the last two years, the 12th and the 13th prizes. So on behalf of the Srinivas Rai Prol Literary Trust and the Rai Prol family, I warmly welcome all of you over here, especially our poet jury, Mani Rao. Please join me on the stage. I also welcome the winner of the 14th Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize, Dr. Sham Sudhakar. Welcome, Sham. It's also quite heartening that many of you in this audience do not need an introduction to Srinivas Rai Prol, something we could not say 20 years ago, probably, and I'll tell you why. But there are many here who still need that introduction, many young people. So I will say a few words about my father. The son of the very well-known Telugu poet, Rai Prol Subba Rao, Srinivas Rai Prol was born in Sikandrabad, and he studied in Nizam College, Banaras Hindu University, before going to Stanford University, where he obtained a master's in civil engineering. And his real name is R. S. Martandam. That's what he's known by in Hyderabad. While in the US, he started writing poetry in English and interacted closely with writers like William Carlos Williams, Ewa Winters, and James Lawlin. On his return to India, Rai Prol joined the government service, and he worked with distinction in various departments and wrote to uh, top positions like the vice chairman of the Hyderabad Urban Development Authority. However, very much like his mentor, William Carlos Williams, who was a doctor by profession, he spent considerable time on literary pursuits. His poems were published in Indian and foreign magazines, including the Atlantic Monthly, Quest, and the Illustrated Weekly. Described by Dom Mores as a pioneer of modern Indian poetry in English, Rai Prol's poems are represented in several anthologies, including the Anthology of Indian Poems, edited by Eric Steinus. He founded and edited a lively literary journal, East and West, in which some of the best writers in India and abroad published poetry and prose, primarily in the late 50s and in the 60s. Three anthologies of his poetry, Bones and Distances, 1968, Married Love, and Other Poems, 1972, and Selected Poems were all published by the Writers' Workshop in Calcutta. There was a la lot of work that was done, but it never you know, got published. And uh, till his rather untimely death in 1998, he turned into a translator 
of Telugu poetry and short fiction into English. His translations had already appeared in anthologies, including Women Writing in India, edited by Suzy Taru and Lalita, which many of you know about. And his collection of translations was edited by Alladi Uma and M. Sridhar, and we, it came out in 2016. But I think Graziano Kratli, a Yale University librarian, has been laboriously working to bring Srinivas Rai Prol out into this world again. So in um, uh, 2016, why should I write a poem now? The letters of Srinivas Rai Prol and William Carlos Williams, 1949 to 1958, came out and by the new uh, Mexico University Press. And a whole lot of literary work has emerged after that. Then Graziano Kratli had, he's the editor, and the foreword for that was written by Arvind Krishna Mehrotra. Two collections of poetry and prose have been recently published, again edited by Kratli, Angular Desire by the Karkanet Press in London, with a foreword by Arvind Krishna Mehrotra, and Random Harvest with a foreword by Vivek Narayanan by Copper Coin Publishing 20, in 2022, so 24 years after his death. Finally, I will end by quoting Jeet Tail, who said, Raya Prol is a master of the unsaid and the most enigmatic of our poets. I'll say a little bit about the prize on behalf of our partner, the Department of English at the University of Hyderabad. Um, recognized as a significant award for creative writing in India, the Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize was instituted jointly by our Srinivas Rai Prol Literary Trust and the University of Hyderabad Department of English. The inaugural prize was awarded in 2009 to Aditi Machado and subsequently to Hemant Mohapatra and Aditi Rao, Sushar Jain, Mihir Vats, Ranjani Murali, Aishwarya Ayer, Gorik Brahmachari, Devarshi Mitra, Purna Swami, Prashant Parvataneni, Satya Dash, and Pervin Saket. And this eminent poets like Sudeep Sen, um, Jeet Tail, Keki Daruwala, Arundhati Subramaniam, K. Srilata, Manohar Shetty, Arvind Krishna Mehrotra, Ranjit Hoskote, Vivek Narayanan, E. V. Ramakrishnan, G. Patel, Mamang Dai, and Vinay Dharvarkar have been associated with the prize as jury members. Um, so it is something that has become a well-known prize. And I would also like to add that I recently got a mail from Debarshi Mitra saying that Gorik Brahmachari and he have co-published a book of poems by the Writers' Workshop. So it is quite uh, heartening to see the evolution of this prize and the poets. Uh, the response to the prize call has been quite encouraging. And the number of entries have been ranging from about 120 to 200 every year. After the initial years when an external poet jury member used to be called upon to read and judge all the entries along with faculty members from the Department of English, uh, the trust and the department now have a process in which a couple of faculty of the Department of English shortlist the entries because some of the senior poets found it daunting to sift through so many, so we decided that they'll send them about 26, 25 uh, poems. And this year, uh, you will hear shortly from Mani Rao, uh, sharing her experience of evaluating the 2022 entries. I'm also uh, happy to note that some of our prize winners have gone on you know, to write and bring more collections of their own. This has been 
very, very interesting. I was telling Sham Sudhakar that most of our prize winners were quite young in their 20s. So he is one of our senior winners too. So that's a nice thing in that sense. Uh, I would also like to share on behalf of the English department that they have set up an Indian writing in English online, uh, a web resource funded by the university's um, institution of eminence, and it is a valuable resource for every any student or general reader. And I'm also very happy to say that Srinivas Raiprol is one of the prominent um, poets that is featured with an essay by Graziano Kratli again in that. So he's very easily accessible now. Um, so thank you again. And I now will move on to an introduction of this year's jury, Dr. Mani Rao. Some of you have already heard her rather lyrical and eloquent poetry in the previous session. She is the author of 12 books of poetry, including Love Me in a Hurry, New and Selected Poems. See, we have something in common with my father everywhere, the selected poems here, Poetry Wala, and three books in translation from Sanskrit, including Saundarya Rehri, a wave of beauty as well. Her writing is widely published in journals and anthologies as poetry magazine, Falkram, Blood Axe Book of Commentary, uh, Contemporary Indian Poems, and the Penguin Book of the Prose Poem. And Mani has held residencies in Iowa for the International Writing Program and in Canberra. She has an MFA in Creative Writing and a PhD in uh, Religious Studies. And we have a Hyderabad connection to Mani's colleague there as well, Leela Nagarajan, so, and the Department of English. So that's very nice as well. So I would also like to introduce Sham Sudhakar before we actually present the prize. Dr. Sham Sudhakar, a bilingual poet, and I think some of you may have heard him already this morning reading in Malayalam writes in both English and Malayalam, and one, he's the winner of the 2022 Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize. He's a lecturer in English literature at the St. Thomas College in Trishur, Kerala. He was chosen among the 114 entries received this year by a jury consisting of Mani Rao and two faculty members, Girish Pawar and Krishnaya, from the Department of English. Sham has widely published, performed readings at home and abroad, and won several awards. His poems have been translated into Tamil, Hindi, Bangla, Chinese, and French. He has six poetry collections, including Drenched by the Sun, Slicing the Moon, and The Last Meteor. He edited an anthology in English titled Shakespeare in the Age of COVID-19, poems and flash fiction by young Indians and four anthologies in Malayalam. So now we'll have the presentation of the prize. I invite my sister, Dr. Manorama, to come, and we will do this together. Read the citation and present the prize first, and after that, maybe we. The Srinivas Rai Parole Literary Trust, in association with the Department of English, University of Hyderabad, is pleased to present the 14th Srinivas Rai Parole Poetry Prize on January 28, 2023, to Shyam Sudhakar for his poetry that carries a wholeness where sorrow and shame does not preclude joy, where land and history are invoked in a visceral and personal manner, stacking images effortlessly, 
and restoring our awareness of the world as a creative project. honored to be a part of this occasion, a very special occasion in the history of Indian writing in English every year. Srinivas Rai Parole is a poet whose writing belongs to the idea of the classic definition of poetry. The writing from experience, the crucible of life, the speaking of truth, a personal truth. And in his own words, he says, the absolute lack of pretense. I'm going to quote a very short poem by him, which really struck me. We love the dead for their being so, stored away in the solitary seclusion of the individual mind, avoidable as necessary, avoidable at a moment's recall, to fill the tears in dining rooms many years later. Um, <clears throat> And this particular prize, see how beautifully it has been designed, how thoughtfully. First of all, it's focused on poetry. It makes poetry the point. Next, it brings back the work of Srinivas Raiparol in the very name of the prize and in all the remembrance that goes with it. And in the process of recognizing a younger poet, it also pulls in an older poet into the process as a jury and as a person who is present at the moment of celebrating the younger poet. It reminds us of the stream, a continuous stream, a tradition of poetry. And this is the Kavya Dhara, you know, the, the, the programming at HLF this year. When, when, we, when we write in the reclusive solitude sometimes, a lot of times, we have, that's how we write. I think this is that lineage, that tradition, the stream that gives us hope and courage and joy and keeps us going and um, it was with a lot of joy that I read uh, Shyam Sudhakar's uh, poetry. Um, I had uh, a whole selection of PDFs all by numbers. So I was jotting down, I shortlisted, I shortlisted again and again and again. And I made sure to rotate them, reread them. And every time I selected it, it was Shyam's work that really stood out for it's, it's sheer scale, it's detail, a kind of magic realism, but it was like the inner skin of experience almost. It was a really interesting 
voice, and I truly enjoyed reading the poetry. So before I let him come over and give you that experience himself, um, I've been asked to read a poem of mine, so I have one. The sky is fitted linen stretched over the sea line without a crease, pegged to the spikes and jags of mountains, king-size navy preparing to be sun-shot sooner than lovers can hide, no sooner than the taste of stars striking your lips one by one stunned and falling to light. It's all been said and yet need blowing between our lips, streams inside a tree. We flowed out of time and back so soon, eating eggs our own. Through each other we pass like water. At the sun to see how it never changes. At the moon to see how it does. Algae slipping beneath our feet, roots traveling and dewdrops dying in visible speed. There is no such thing as a circular river. Unlike bread, the body becomes softer with age. We tag our children with our names, store the plates of our daughters, stash berries under rocks and look for them later. Held in the fangs of a wristwatch, a well-worn path of a nail in our veins, heart-hammered time trail. No matter who two are kissing, eternity arrives. Jelly bean, eyes black, crystal balls. The longer we look, the more we recognize and anything we could say is too obvious. The songs we like are the songs we know, and every song on the radio is about us. And the winner of the 14th Srinivas Rai Prol Poetry Prize, Sham Sudhakar. Thank you for this venue. Thank you for this award, because I <coughs> was told for, by my friends that it's a great award. <laughs> it's one of the greatest poetry prize ever. And because of its transparency. And uh, thank you. I'll read the, the poem. Muziris. <coughs> oh. It's about a port, ancient port in Kerala. And I don't know how many of you uh, have heard of Muziris. Um, long time back it was a, it was one of the greatest ports and now Cochin uh, is one of the port and now nobody knows actually where that port is. Some historians say that, I mean it was here and people say that it was there. But uh, the, the, the the space, you know, like the space of that uh, port was really important because it made the entire trade of ancient Chinese and Arabia uh, with India. Because uh, uh, if you drop a, a boat, a normal sail, sail over in Mediterranean Sea with wind, with rain, it comes to the port of Kerala. It hits the first. And that is how the rain comes to Kerala and rain moves to through the Mediterranean, it's that route. And Hippalas wind brings it into Kerala and that is how the, the ancient trade works in the entire south. Muziris. The one who knows the sea unlocks a sky in the heart. There are five portions. This is the first one. The one who knows the sea unlocks a sky in the heart. Two. 
the old town of the rough rains that you seek is dead. The alleys that once glittered with the spark of metals now reek of silence. Everything returns to its origin. Earthen pots to mud, water to the depths unraveled by the anchor, coins to their luster. Nothing remains in the memory. No more jasmine scents, no more damsels. Roads are clogged by thrones. Weapons, like photographs of lightning, became mere showpieces. Three. When the afternoon sun becomes rooted in the earth and the tree does off stretching their finger to Periyar, Periyar is a river, I remember a lost vessel that once sailed to my shores as natural as a mango falling into its own earth. With a kiss, God united us. Gazing at the night sky, we joined the stars. Together, we saw the edge of the sky boiling in the waves. At the doorstep of the sea, a town bloomed, stretching out 51 tongues. The glory of the sun has long drowned, yet the sound of the same sea and the faith in the same stars drip into memory. We parted ways in the drought after the flood, pretending nothing passed between us, never committed love or time, shared dreams of the body, nor surrendered language. Yet, had you waited for me this long on the same deck, like a season nailed on to the wall of earth by some god, had you stood unmoving in the summer heat and salty winds echoing the same sea? Many have come later in search of me, animals, birds, fishes, a defeated king, corpses of the toys that lost their child, long kisses of the wind blown into darkness, anchored stars waiting for their turn, the rain. Like lightning on the earth, time has shimmered through my bones, unknown by day and night. Water mountains blooming wild, shivering soil, the madness coursing through the flooded arteries of Periyar. I still jolt awake at those memories. Four. Did you confuse the mouth of the broken pot with bangles? Did you decipher the scribblings of a mad foreigner to be a new language? Dear Mr. Historian, if you are done seducing tourists, please be seated to and listen to this song. As the king for the foreign deity decreed to build a temple mighty, with the same sweet and spirit that we set straight in merit, blowing sand, lifting stone and timber in mass, building walls, fitting solid doors in brass, the royal caste in a grand manner stood adorned under the Greed's banner. The lower caste stood step aside, cowering at the eternal dharma beside. Those spaces vacated by the untouchables and claimed by the insatiable feudal men, parting the grating sea with roaring oars under the wrath that the summer sun pours. In the ragging winds on the wooden vessel, the goddess sways in tune with the waves' whistle, bearing the sacred sword and chillum chiming, the devotees utter the fucking song, dancing. The procession goes on with the mother god blessing. She sings down the navel of, she sings down the navel of land casing. As an offering, once a Portuguese sailor sent a bell for the goddess in valor. 
its resounding knell became the music of the world, and on it is written the praise of his Lord. Sia Asantimo Nome Divas Lawatu. Say, I mean, the real translation is in the name of most holy, lovable God, Jesus. Actually, it is believed that the bell, there was a bell in a temple, and uh, it is written, this, these words are written in that temple. It's called Kodungalu Temple in Kerala, near Muzari's port. And it is believed that the bell was given to Kodungalu Temple by Udayambeiru Church during uh, a time when gods were in harmony. <coughs> so the bell's untold story remains in the temple. Why did you wipe off from history the stories of Persian merchants who waited on the shore for goods and spices? The farmer who was forced to sell his black tears for almost nothing. His skinny, barren daughters who could never climb up high or flower. Once, a lean sailor came in from sea. In his dreams blazed the vertebra of the sun, the brain of the sky. He left no footprints. Plowing the soil, he sowed his seeds, and from there grew tombs like moss on the earth. Hollow hearts bloomed. The waterfall between two dreams dammed itself. The wings of the wild ducks drooped. Crows became the dead. The wild smile of a heart appeared in the mid sky. The shivering skeleton of the sun. Several arcs came later, hunting wild stars. Many sailors, different seats. I can hear the footsteps of those without footprints, thud, 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 spreading down like lightning from the heart. Dreams, fears, reflections, excitements leave no footprints. When your palm leaves narrate history as stories of mere conquest, the sigh of a rotting harbor reflects a lightning smile in the dark. Buried in the earth lie, lie several sculptures, padittipatta songs, various news from Greece, Arabia, Persia, a Buddha's head wrapped in Chinese net, the chim of death in precious stones, cotton, food, weapons, Isis, Patni, Kannagi, the women who still guard the corpses of their husbands in the lonely temple tunnels, the wives who turned into stone when the fire feasted upon the city, the steam of their vengeance rising from their ruins. A big drop of wrath covers the sky. The world ends with water and fire. Whose world has ended otherwise? Birth and death, the Alpha and Omega. Yet, a turtle with ashes in one eye and water in the other upholds our dreams. Its legs hold the weariness of centuries, the varied water it's been through, the fallen faces innumerable. Pallibana Perimal. The crucified bought in by Hippalus through the waters, Shangara the eternal, Arya Shangara, rural deities who turned into sand and stone, Naga queens, languages fettered with smallpox, the barge that washed ashore, a refugee Jew, the farmer of black tears, the smile of death that escaped from the salty lips of drought, the thud, 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 thud sound of the last beat that dissolved in the wind without footprints. Five. Like the song of death spreading in the burning cabin of a ship, the presence of sea unfolds in memory. Its voice crowds into me, like the roots of a wild tree 
creeping into a dead man's ear, like meeting one's own future in a desert. I burn in the rhythm of that voice. In the fall of my life, time and wind tell me of Bilati ships landing in Kochari. Kochari is Kochi, and Bilati is the ancient name of England. Uh, we call England Bilati earlier. In the fall of my life, time and wind tell me of Bilati ships landing in Kochari, crossing the invisible web of machines. The sea lashes hard against my heart, now covered in moss. The decayed roots of a giant tree that had once welcomed thousands of migratory wings lie spread on the soil. I can hear my name slipping into silence, my name like a huge turtle crawling into oblivion. In time, the wind has managed to slowly heal the old wounds. I leave myself open to new lashes. The fallen doors will open only to the sky. They focus only on sun and moon. I can hear the wind brushing past the waves, assertions and desertions. Thank you very much to Sham Sudhakar for giving us a glimpse of that writing. It was absolutely mesmerizing. Thank you. I now call upon Saranya, my daughters, and the granddaughter of Srinivas Rayapurul, to come and say thank you. On behalf of the Srinivas Rai Pro Literary Trust, I would first like to thank the organizers of HLF for once again hosting the presentation of the Srinivas Rai Pro Poetry Prize. We especially are grateful to Ms. Amita Desai, Professor Vijay Kumar, and Professor Usha Raman for making it happen this year. I would like to extend a special thanks to this year's poet jury member, uh, Dr. Mani Rao, for uh, not only agreeing to be here, but also serve as the jury. Uh, we are uh, delighted to have with us Dr. Sam Sudhakar, the winner of this year's Srinivas po Poetry Prize, uh, who was able to receive the prize in person and read his poetry to a live audience after having the event online for two years. We appreciate the generous support and partnership of the Department of English, University of Hyderabad, in administering the prize this year. A thanks to Professor Murli Manohar and Professor Anna Kurian for facilitating the jury process at the department. We're also grateful to Dr. B. Krishnaya and Dr. Gidish Pawar, who served at the faculty jury this year and helped us shortlist the 26 entries out of the 114 received. A sincere thanks to Professor Vasuki Belavari of the Department of Communication, University of Hyderabad, Mr. Ashish Jacob Thomas, Public Relations Officer of the University, and Pranay Rupani for their constant support in facilitating, promoting, and documenting the prize event. Mr. Ganesh for sorting and organizing the entries has been most helpful. Finally, we're grateful to all of you for sparing the time here to be here today and be a part of the celebration of Indian poetry in English. Thank you. <laughs> 